Thank you very much, uh, Ingeon, for your kind introduction. Uh, it is uh, truly a um, privilege to be invited here to give some of my thoughts on uh, Yara as an organization and as a, as a business in context of uh, sustainability and responsible business practices. In the last 50 years, we have really seen unprecedented positive development when it comes to wealth creation, um, when it comes to education, uh, life expectancy and uh, technology. But still, the current economic model is deeply flawed. According to um, the 2016 Oxfam report, 1% of the world's population owns as many assets or as much value as the remaining 99% of the world. 800 million people go to bed every night hungry, not knowing whether they will wake up in the morning or where the next meal will come from. Between the age of five and 14, 150 million children are engaged in child labor, often under very dangerous conditions. And income inequality is at its largest level for more than 30 years. Also on the climate side, since the 1980s, the, the number of natural disasters triggered by change in climate has increased by more than uh, double. So clearly, today's economic model is not inclusive enough. Something has to be, has to be done about that. And um, I'm not here only to talk about doomsday scenarios. Uh, I think we have to reflect on the situation as it is today. But we have also been given some tools and before I proceed, I want to introduce all of you to the Sustainable Development Goals. When you are named a faith keeper of the Onondaga Council of Chiefs, and for me, it was 51 years ago, you are told that we are now placing in your hands all life, and it is your responsibility to look after all life. Every person, every tree, every animal, every stream, and the earth itself unto the seventh generation. In 1972, the world started a process that is mapping our future. The United Nations Conference on the Human Environment held in Stockholm brought the industrialized and developing nations together to delineate the rights of people to a healthy and productive environment. Crisis will profoundly alter Our burning of fossil fuels is slowly warming the globe. Our report is founded upon the concept of sustainable development. We all have two hands and the sentiment of the world. Now I wonder if they will even exist. We are plundering our children's heritage for our present unsustainable practices. The key is to come out from Johannesburg with a credible commitment to action. Now is your moment to save ourselves and the planet for our children. We can fix this. We can stop this matter. Accelerated climate change is here right now. I will now. link arms with those marching for climate action. We baby are going to fight. Mommy, Daddy, your president too. We will all fight. We are experiencing a process that is linking our nations and communities much more closely together than they have ever been before. Our lives are intertwined via the food we eat, the music we listen to, the information we get, and the ideas we hold. Last year, the world's leaders unanimously committed to eliminate extreme poverty catastrophic wars, address climate change, and build more resilient societies. In the Agenda 2030, we have a blueprint for sustainable development. Now the real work and the real opportunities begin. 
We have a very the potential offered by these new sustainable development goals and the binding treaty on climate change is immense. It is a new chapter of hope for the world. It is we, the peoples, who are embarking today on a journey towards a more sustainable and equitable future. Our journey will involve governments, the United Nations system and other international institutions, local authorities, indigenous peoples, civil society, business and the private sector, the scientific and the academic community, and all people. Because we deserve to do more than just survive. We deserve to thrive. This interconnectedness among humans on the planet is creating a global village where the barriers of national and international boundaries become less relevant and the world a smaller place. The road ahead may be fraught with difficulties, challenges, and struggles, but we must dare each other to be visionary, to be ambitious, to be leaders. Given the opportunity, we can raise ourselves. We must join hands with the rest of creation and speak of common sense responsibility, solidarity, and peace. We have all the tools. We are standing in front of an opportunity to change the course of life on the planet. Let's work together to make this world better, where everybody can live with dignity and abundance. Our future starts now. To leave no one behind, we must all lead. In um, 2015, there were two major accomplishments to support the sustainability of our, of our globe. One was the agreement around the sustain, uh, sustainable development goals, and the other one was the climate agreement in Paris. Uh, more than 190 countries were brought together and they agreed upon a framework that can change the trajectory when it comes to climate. Because if we don't change the, the trajectory now on climate, we will start to put people back into poverty. I talked about how hundreds of millions of people have been brought out of poverty. The ones that suffer the most from climate change are the ones that are the weakest today. Unless this trajectory is changed, 150 million people will be taken back into poverty within the next few years. And with the Sustainable Development Goals and the target behind it, we have a framework to work with in order to change our behavior, to change businesses, to drive it in the right direction. Um, but these goals are very demanding and the time frame is very short. We're talking until year 2030. And about a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, a group of uh, business leaders got, to, they got together and we realized that business as usual is not going to work <coughs> this time. The challenges that we're up against and the targets in the Sustainable Development Goals are so demanding that no <coughs> financial institution, no industry, no academic institution, institution can do this alone. We need to work in a different way. And what we did then was to bring together, all in all, 34 uh, business leaders. And we decided to view this from a different angle and make a report or an analysis on what does it mean if we use the Sustainable Development Goals as a framework to drive strategy. What, what are the business opportunities that are embedded into the Sustainable Development Goals. And the result of that is this report that I'm holding right here, Better Business, Better World. And we launched this in January of this year. And it's done by a group of people ranging from all types of businesses. It's led by Lord Mark Malik Brown, but, and you have representative from the branded consumer goods business with CEO of Unilever, Paul Pullman. And from the technology side, uh, 
by Jack Ma from, from Alibaba. And uh, I've been fortunate to be part of this group where we really went through everything in detail. What happens if we are transparent throughout the value chain? What is possible to find in opportunities? And rather focusing on this from a positive angle. And we found tremendous opportunities. We focused on four areas. It's uh, energy, cities, food and agriculture, and health and well-being. And by realizing these business opportunities, we found that we can add value corresponding to 12 trillion US dollars per year from year 2030. It's a tremendous business opportunity, but it requires a different way of working. And it is necessary because today we see a lack of trust. There's a lack of trust in, in institutions. And I think it was very well visualized by the Edelman Trust Barometer that is uh, launched every year in January. And uh, it ranks the, the public's trust in, in government, NGOs, media, and business. And all of them hit an all-time low, and all of them were reduced from a year ago. So the public trust is not there at the moment. And we see this also reflected in challenges to the established institutions. And regardless of what your political views might be, I think we can all agree that the world is moving more towards isolationism and less on global trade. And uh, this is not the right direction to move in. And then we have to take it upon ourselves, also as business leaders, that we have a way to go. And we need to demonstrate that we are able to build sustainable development goals into our business strategy and change the way we're working and become part of the solution rather than be part of the problem. So what does that mean for us in, in the auto? Well, it means that we have gone through a process to redefine our strategy. But before we looked into the future, we decided to take a look at the past. Where did we come from? Our company was founded in 1905 by three individuals, uh, Eide, Birkeland, and Wallenberg. And it was founded based on an idea or a, uh, a patent or an in innovation on how to make fertilizer in industrial scale. And um, some of you might not be familiar with what our business is. And um, let, me, let me explain what it is. Plants, just like humans, need nutrition. And one of the most important components of nutrition for the plants is nitrogen. And nitrogen is all around us in the air, but it's not available to plants. They need to get it from the ground. And as you grow, uh, grow plants and you intensify agriculture, you, you drain the soil of these nutrients. So you need to find a way to put nu nutrition back into the ground to give the plants nutrition. And this was a huge challenge also in Europe if we go 100 years back. We were faced with famine in Europe. We needed a solution to bring nutrition into the ground in order to, uh, to create larger harvests. And these three individuals had that idea. So 100 years ago, they came up with an idea of how to take nitrogen out of the air and create a product that could be applied to the ground. And um, it's not long ago that the Norwegian Patent Office had a popular vote on what is the most important innovation in Norway of all time. And uh, I think many people would think that it's something related to perhaps in the oil and gas industry, but it's not. It's the patent on how to get nitrogen out of the air and turn it into a product. That solved the famine in Europe 100 years ago, but it's still a very relevant topic today. And we wanted to build this into our mission and, and vision. And uh, we took a look at the past, but I also wanted to make sure that this is a journey that the whole organization takes place, uh, take a part in. We have 16,000 employees in IATA today. And I wanted to make sure that our mission represents 
our whole organization and what we're all about. So we, we spent nearly a year involving the organization to figure out what is our mission. And mission is really purpose. What is the reason that Yara exists? And through that work, we came up with our mission. It is to responsibly feed the world and protect the planet. Our product helps to increase the yields for farmers. And at the same time, we are protecting the planet through making agriculture more productive. We also see uh, established a vision, and that's putting us in a much broader context in, in society. And we have a vision of a collaborative society, meaning that we need to look much broader, not just internally, but externally as well. What is our role in society? And, and the challenges need to be solved through collaboration. So we want a collaborative society, a world without hunger, and a planet respected. That is our vision. And then we have the, the values to back that up on ambition, curiosity, collaboration, and accountability. And I can tell you that this is what our company is all about. Every investment decision that we make has to support our mission. And I believe that if you talk with people in our organization, just about everyone will know this mission and everyone will know their part in fulfilling our, our mission. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we got this communicated broadly. So we made a, a book that we, uh, where we described our mission our, and, our, and our vision and our values, how we arrived at it, our strategy, and also real life examples of how we work every day out in our markets. And uh, this is something that I'm personally very committed to as well. And in an organization of 16,000 people, there's only so much time I have in order to communicate that, that message. But I wanted to make sure that everyone understood that this is something that I stand behind as well. So what I did, since I can't go out and, 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 and talk to everyone in the organization, is that I signed each and every book of these 16,000 copies. And uh, perhaps a small piece of advice to you before you commit to signing 16,000 books, do the math and figure out how long that will take. It does <laughs> require a lot, but at least if I achieve nothing else, I achieve uh, a very strong uh, signal that this is something that I truly stand behind as a CEO of the company. And it is very relevant to the opportunities out there in the markets today. There's about 7 billion people on, on Earth today. It will grow to nearly 10 billion by year 2050. There's a need for increasing food production by 50%. And today, agriculture represents 25% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And half of that is through change of land use. So how do we feed the world today and in the future without harming the environment? Well, the solution to that is in crop nutrition, ensuring that we bring the right products to the farmers so they can be more productive. And we have to do that while we reduce the greenhouse gas emissions as well. So we have to do all these things in combination. But the great news is here is that we don't need any miracles. We already know what to do. It's about rolling it out and getting the message out there to everyone and, and, and really get these solutions implemented. And what does that mean every day? Well, here's one example. This is uh, Felix Nuri. He's a farmer in Kenya. And I, I was uh, lucky to meet him last fall. He's a maize farmer. He has a few cows. And he, um, he grows coffee. He's done so for 20 to 30 years. But his yields were quite low. So he had interaction with our agronomists that introduced him to somewhat different farming techniques introduced him to crop nutrition. And today, he's gone from then producing five kilos of coffee per tree to 20 to 30 kilos per, per tree, multiplying four, five, six times what he had in the past. And that makes a huge difference. It means that he had the opportunity to make enough money from this to diversify his farm a bit. He sent his eldest daughter to university and he built a house. That's the impact that we can have on an individual. 
And then I want to introduce you to Grace as well. I brought a, a short video to show another example of a farmer using our product. Mimi kwa jina naitwa Grace Nyagawa. Naishi kijiji cha Matiganjora, wilaya ya Njombe na mkoa wa Njombe. Lakini kwa maeneo wanayonifahamu mimi wananiita mama wa Yara. Mwaka elfu moja mia tisa, tisini na ine wazazi wangu walipo pariki. Nini kuwa nalima kilimo cha mazoya. Ambacho nini kuwa nalima kwa kweli kilikuwa hakina mafanikio. Kwa mba unawezu kalima ikali mbili, kavuna magunia maine kwa ikali mbili. Ambacho kilimo kilikuwa hakina tija. Nikaendelea kilimo hivu hivu cha mahindi. Na watoto na wasomesha hivu hivu watoto wangu wakiwa wawili. Kwa hivu baada ya kuja mafunzo, Maya kwanza, wakati nalima kilimo cha mazoya, nikuwa naweza kulima hata yekali tatu. Lakini mafunu ni kidogo. Lakini nivu kuja kupata mafunzo. Niliacha kwanza zile yekali tatu, nikatumia nika yekali moja kwanza. Kwa kutumia mifuko mitatu ya mbolea ya ya alamira siri. Kwa mifuko moja, wakupandia. Mifuko wapili, wa unakuzia awamu ya kwanza. Mifuko watatu, unakuzia mshoni. Kwa hiyo nilivu endelea kufata kanuni hizo, nimekuta kuna mafanikeo mazuri, ambazo zimeniwezesha kupata gunia 20 kwa ekali hii mwede. Ambalo ninalitumia kwa kufata kanuni zile nilizo elekezwa, kitu ambacho nimekipata kwa, kwa, kwa ungeziko la mazao ya kwa ale ambayo nimelima. Kipato nilicho kipata, kwanza nimetumia kago kwa mwanafunzi. Niniwezesha hicho hicho kipato. Pili, nimejie nga nyumba ambayo mnaeo na ye kutokea na kipato hicho hicho. Tatu, maisha ya kwangu mi mwenyeo, chakula cha kutosha. Hayo ndio mafanikio, hiyo ya pata kutokana na kilimo, cha kutumia mbolea ya ya. So here uh, you saw two examples of uh, smallholder farmers and then you, you can ask, well, do two smallholder farmers uh, make enough impact to move the needle in a corporation that sells 30 million tons of fertilizer a year? And they don't. But when you start to aggregate the numbers, and I tell you that last year alone in Africa we met 186,000 farmers, then it starts to matter. We met 250,000 farmers in Asia explaining the benefits of the right nutrition plan. And then it starts to, to have an impact. And, and we have to think even, even bigger than that as well. And, and think outside our normal way of doing business. And one example of that is that we have partnered up with the World Food Programme. They're one of the biggest buyers of food in the world, supporting people in poverty and, and struck with hunger. And very often, it's the smallholder farmers that come in difficulty. And they made the commitment that they will buy from smallholder farmers, but that we use this to create a value chain. So we joined up with fertilizer program. We have uh, Rabobank to do the financing. We have buyer on, on chemicals, creating a full value chain for the farmers to show that it's possible to get scale. Today, this program benefits 100,000 farmers in Africa. It will reach 1.4 million farmers in Africa when it's fully rolled out. And what we're demonstrating is that we can create scale and in the future, you can put additional names with some of the biggest branded consumer goods companies in the world together with the World Food Program and create full value chains for the farmers. And this is important uh, for, for all of us. Today, uh, Africa is about 5% of our turnover. At some point in time, Africa will be our biggest market. When that happens, I don't know. But we have to invest in the, in the future. We have, been, uh, we have invested a half a billion kroner in the last year and a half in Africa. And uh, for many reasons, two thirds of the future undeveloped agricultural land is in Africa. There are 1.2 billion inhabitants in Africa today. By year 2050, there will be 2.4 billion Africans. It's the fastest population growth in the world. But today, Africa imports food for $25 billion a year. Leaving the money leaving the continent that could have been used to create jobs. If this is not changed in the very near future, that number will hit $100 billion by year 2025. 
And if you think that this is a regional problem only if we don't solve it, think again, this will have a global consequence and we all have a role to play. But it's possible to combine this both with doing business, growing our business, but also to uh, support the communities that we operate. We're also operating in more developed agriculture countries. And today, in fact, the largest country by volume in the area is Brazil. One third of our sales is in Brazil. One third of our employees are in Brazil. And here's large scale farming. Uh, and uh, Brazil is one of the major food exporters to the rest of the world. We saw, saw this uh, quite early on and we built our position from being supplying, say, standard solutions to the farmers to today having more and more advanced solutions tailored to the specific needs of the crops or the farmer. And we're able to grow this. And today, one third of our sales in, uh, in, uh, in Brazil are advanced type uh, fertilizer solutions supporting their productivity and their bottom line. And at the same time, we're growing our business and we're growing it profitably. Uh, it's also relevant for, um, for uh, digital uh, and the use of technology. It's becoming a bigger and bigger part of our offering. We have uh, uh, sensors that go on top of uh, tractors that uh, can read the nitrogen content in the ground and then distribute fertilizer according to where the needs are the greatest. Uh, so thereby we're actually reducing the fertilizer need, but we are applying it in a more educated manner. We have sensors to, to uh, measure water in the plants and, and, and uh, give the farmer uh, advice on when to, 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 to water the, the crops. We have tools that are on smartphones to give you advice on the uh, nutrition deficiencies and, and how to optimize your crops and so on. And even uh, today we're, we're starting to use satellite technology, using satellites to map the agriculture areas and to give indications on where we should do soil samples. This is already quite advanced and I think many of us, uh, at least in the past, have had this old um, say preconceptions of what, what a farmer is really all about, quite old fashioned, that's not the case at all. The farmers are already very technology uh, savvy and increasingly so. What this also provides is reach. And this is something we're spending a lot of time on now. How can we use technology to reach even further when it comes to farmer communication? It's only the beginning. So I talked about our uh, global presence. Uh, today we have a turnover of around 100 billion Norwegian kroner. We had an EBITDA of around 15 billion in 2016. And we're investing. Last year we invested 14 billion kroner. This year we're reaching an all-time high of 18 billion kroner in investments. We're investing for the future. And I think a lot of this growth is driven by more advanced needs of the farmers, but also a lot of it coming from developing countries. And I think it's a good testimony that it is possible to run a business for profit and at the same time do something that is good for society. Uh, most of you know us as a fertilizer company, we're also using our our um, skills in cleaning technologies to find other niches. And, and here's an example of a cleaning technology that is used to reduce SOX emissions from, uh, from ships such as this cruise ship. Uh, another example is what we do on uh, cleaning technology for diesel engines. Uh, using our expertise on nitrogen, we have come up with a a product here that is called AdBlue, which uh, is really urea or nitrogen mixed with water and it's used to reduce the NOx emissions from, from cars. We're the largest producer of this in the world. And as you see here from 2012 until today, we have more than tripled in volume. And if we go further back, this was almost non-existent. Today, this is a three and a half billion kroner turnover business annually and it's, uh, and it's growing and um, it's profitable and it reduces 1.4 million tons of NOx emissions every year by other product. That's the same as the combined emissions from all of France per year, as an example. So we do a lot by helping the farmers. We do a lot through uh, supporting industrial 
customers in reducing their emissions. We also have to do whatever we can to reduce our own carbon footprint. And we constantly work on improving our efficiency. Um, we also need to address our cost competitiveness. And uh, no doubt about it, our industry is going through some of the most difficult times in recent history. And we need to be prepared for the future as well. And we're going through large programs now to improve the productivity at our plants. And at the same time, also reducing our emissions. And one good example of that is this catalyst. One of the emissions from the production of fertilizer is laughing gas. It's a very potent climate gas. And uh, our engineers, our researchers in Porsche came up with this idea of a catalyst to reduce these emissions. This invention alone has reduced our climate gas emissions by 50% compared to 2004. But it's also a business opportunity. Using this knowledge, we have uh, patented it, we have licensed it, and it's used by our competitors. It's reducing global emissions by 23 million tons of CO2 equivalents per year. That's about half of Norway's CO2 emissions through this invention alone. And we're able to make money on it on top of that. So that's one example, but we will do more as well. And I'm uh, pleased to, to tell you that uh, we will make new announcements on, on that, not today, but tomorrow. So I, I'm uh, urging you to, to stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. I will make an announcement on a breakthrough technology supporting our uh, supply chain and where we will again demonstrate that Yara is a pioneer in the industry globally. So take note of these Twitter uh, addresses and uh, we, will, we will send the, the, the tweets to you. So I, I, I started my presentation saying it's all about business. I didn't really mean that. Uh, we, we need to add something. What it's all about, it's, it's all about business with a purpose. And uh, I was also asked to give some advice uh, at, at the end of my presentation and, uh, to you, as I know that several of you are now looking at what you will do after you finish your studies. And uh, from time to time, I, I, I do get the, the question, what, what, is, what was my career plan as uh, I went through the various steps and, and finally ended up uh, as, um, as, as a CEO of, uh, of a major corporation. And uh, what I can tell you on, uh, on that, that the, so the, the secret or the, 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 what was behind my career development is that there is no plan. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the reason I, I say that no, no plan opens up, opens up your perspectives. And um, I never planned to become CEO. I always focused on doing my very best in the job that I had. But I see in, in too many instances I, I've worked with and I've seen very skilled people, very hardworking people that get presented with opportunities and they don't grab them because opportunities very often come at the time that is not ideal. It's never ideal, right? And if we're too rigid that we should do this step now and we should go there and there and there, these opportunities will pass you by and you will stagnate. Still, I, I will leave you with some enablers that have been important for me. Uh, when I started working, I was fortunate enough to start working in, in a company called Elkem. Uh, at that time, it had just gone through an extremely difficult time uh, being as close to bankruptcy as you can without really going bankrupt. But that did something to that organization. It was uh, competing on the global scale. Uh, almost all uh, the sales were export, uh, exports. And it was led by Ole Enger at the time. And he had a very clear pr uh, principle of, of management. Um, if, if you're able to contribute today, it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter what your education is, it doesn't matter what age you are, you get the opportunity. And uh, that, that's uh, something that uh, really helped me to, to develop
quickly. It certainly is uh, a lot of uh, hard work. You don't get away from that, but to be given that opportunity is key. So, so find an organization where you can develop. Um, then I also urge you to take the opportunity to travel abroad, work abroad if you have that opportunity. Also, be hands-on, learn, learn the business. If you, if you work at a large corporate, make sure you also get enough time to spend out in the business units and at the, at the factories. And, and don't think too much about the straight line career progression. Learn the trade is, uh, is really important. And then last and perhaps most important, find a business with a purpose, uh, one that fits your own purpose. Because just as with, with you as students, not every day is easy. You will have setbacks. Um, and uh, when you work, you, you'll find many places. You, you will get a paycheck. Even in, even in the auto, you will get a paycheck when you, when, when, you, when you work. But it's also about having a purpose larger than yourself, larger than, than the company. And when you have these setbacks, and you sit back at the end of the day and reflect on the day. Yeah, it was a tough day, but what I did today, what our organization did today, mattered to an individual, it mattered to a society, and it mattered to the globe. That is a greater purpose, and that is far more important than a paycheck. We spend way too much time at work only to think about that. So um, I will... Um, then uh, introduce you to one of your, um, or my colleague and, and one of your fellow uh, alumni from uh, BI, Fredrik Hanses. Uh, he's, uh, he's been a student here and, and he will uh, tell you about his journey from being a student and entering into work life at uh, Yara. So with that, I thank you so much for your attention. It's truly been a privilege to be together with you here today. Thank you.